Well, hello, beautiful people. Shivani here. Uh, it's been a long time. I really disconnected from YouTube a couple of years ago, as you can tell. Uh, and even though I haven't been here on YouTube, uh, the work and, and everything behind the scenes has been full tilt. Uh, a couple of years ago, as as you know, um, I was doing basically a sadhana of a monthly uh, video about the astrology and the information coming through at that time. And after that year's com completion, I really felt um, that it wasn't it 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 was wasn't needed anymore. Its its purpose had been served, and so I really just kind of wanted to to disconnect from constantly. Uh, creating and coming forward because I needed to really go inside uh, and be in a chrysalis for a couple of years and um, I don't know bloom uh, and this week quite surprisingly honestly uh, I've been guided very strongly that I need to start posting on here again and posting uh, to share the information that has been coming through uh, for these incredibly um, beautiful but incredibly challenging times so to give you a little context over the last year uh, 2023 was probably one of my most challenging and most rewarding years of my life it uh, at every single step of the way I felt completely supported completely held completely guided uh, and then on another level I was completely and utterly eviscerated uh, ripped to pieces and then put back in a way that honestly feels more in self and in essence than I've ever experienced before and I think more and more people uh, in this world are going to be going through similar experiences in your own way. Everybody's going to have their own way, their own journey. This is not a this is how it is, right? In fact, I think anybody who's on here at the moment saying this is how it is, uh, I think automatically in my mind is very uh, missing a piece of the bigger picture because the fact is none of us know exactly what is happening. I think there's what is really beautiful right now and partly why I wanted to bring my voice back to the collective is that all of us are getting the pieces that we've come to bring forward but they are a piece of the puzzle. They are not the entire picture of the puzzle and so there's so amazingly beautiful people out there really bringing and shining their pieces of the puzzle. Um, Heather Ensworth, Pam Gregory, um, Julia Blas, uh, Louise Platt from Spiral Bright. You know, these people are really, really shining brightly their pieces of the puzzle, but they're, they're pieces. They are not the whole picture. And I feel as though um, the magic in this moment is when we are coming together. We're coming together with our own pieces and really sharing those without declaring that we have the answers, which is what I really love about the woman that I've mentioned is that they're not declaring they have the answers. They're declaring that this is what they see in the moment. And I think that that is such a beautiful and feminine it's a real expression of the divine feminine as the divine feminine and divine masculine come back into balance is that there's this real beauty of collaboration, right? And not collaboration because um, from a lack, but each piece coming in its full sovereignty and in its full wholeness with the humility and the awareness that it's a peace not the whole picture. And so this is why I am here today to add my piece to the puzzle um, of this beautiful unfolding that we are in, this beautiful uh, 
blossoming that we are all in and that we are all in together. Now, uh, the last year, I think it was in March last year, as soon as Saturn went into Pisces, my world really got turned on its head. Uh, I got instructed. Uh, I work with a team. Uh, I work with a team of light beings. I'm not going to go into to, you know their names or their context or anything like that. Uh, you know, Lee just calls his team the Z's. Um, I call my team the team. Um, but uh, my team instructed me to sell my cow, uh, my beautiful cow Lakshmi, um, who has gone to an amazing home and is absolutely worshipped as she should be. Uh, but uh, in March last year, um, I was a, a instructed to, to sell my cow um, because I was going to be traveling. And sure enough, I spent 2023 uh, traveling much more. I mean, obviously with COVID, um, nobody was really traveling, but uh, just much more. And I actually ended up really connecting a huge piece of my heart and piece of myself uh, back to the UK, which I'd never really spent more than a day in London before last year. But through circumstances, I ended up coming uh, here. I'm actually in the UK right now uh, three times last year. And what came through every time I came was uh, this deep remembrance of the heart consciousness. Everything right now that's coming through in my piece of the puzzle is about heart consciousness, the light codes in the water, the light codes in the land, and the importance of the human voice as the animus technology. And what I mean by that is our ability to create resonance within the human voice that allows entrainment and allows communication uh, with all beings um, and including land and trees and animals, but also with other humans. And that this is really important. And right now, as I'm recording this, we've got a conjunction of uh, Mercury with North Node. And so this, the way we speak is incredibly important. The words we use are incredibly important. And as we shift into a more, uh, you know, some will call it 5D, some call it New Earth, um, a collective experience, the way we speak and the words we use, I think are gonna change quite dramatically. It's, you know, as we see like old English in the way, you know, Shakespeare would speak and, and things like that. There's a completely different way of relating to language. And I, I believe, I believe, rightly or wrongly, uh, subject to change. That's what I always say. I'm like, this is what I believe right now. And it's subject to change. But right now, I truly believe that we, the shift of consciousness that we are already embarking on, but I think very, very quickly, we're going to be seeing quantum leaps in this energy shift. Um, the languaging of how we speak is going to be a huge um, indicator of which bandwidth of consciousness we're coming from. And the reason for that is that when you're experiencing the reality from an interconnective or collective consciousness perspective, the dualistic and uh, singularity, egoic languaging of I and you and them and other is frankly repulsive um, in my in my body. It just doesn't it just does literally doesn't resonate. So I think we're going to really start to see an interesting coming coming through of new languaging. Uh, so that's something to be really, um, uh, on the lookout for is how people are speaking really is showing the bandwidth of consciousness that they are functioning from as their functional perspective, I could call it. So keeping this in mind, uh, last year on the three different trips to the UK, um, I start, I had the, the privilege of, returning, I'm going to say, first time in this lifetime, but definitely not the first time, uh, returning to places such as Stonehenge, Woodhenge, um, New Forest, 
uh, on the on the second trip that I first and second trip that I came. And as I did this, I started to get more and more information about my role, my gift, my opportunity, uh, my dharma of remembering these land songs and the importance of pilgrimage of that these places in the land often denoted by churches because we all know that you know churches were built on the sacred nodes or vortexes in the land uh, especially on the ley lines of saint michael um, and the rose line uh, that these places these places in the land are very, very important nodal calibrations for the collective. So when we go to these places, we're actually activating the wisdom and knowledge that we have inside of ourselves. And we are re-sanctifying the land because it's the caliber of the soul that walks the land that is re re uh, sanctifying it, you know, the, the lays of the lines of light where angels have tread. And so in September, I had the, the honor of picking up my pieces as they called it, um, of going through from the lakes in Ambleside, um, down through the North of Wales, experiencing these different burial chambers, um, different standing stones, the cliffs of Anglesey, and bringing all this energy to the equinox at Avebury, uh, where the divine masculine and divine feminine was coming into balance for that equinox. Then I was guided to go down to Sedona. So I spent two and a half weeks um, moving around the from the great cedars to the vortexes in Sedona for the big eclipse in uh, October, taking the energy, singing the land songs and receiving the energy, the, the gems I call them, from each place and bringing those gems to Mount Shasta via... Um, Sherman, the biggest tree in the world at Sequoia National Park, uh, uh, Joshua Tree, uh, and then bringing those, just like I bought the English ones to Avebury, we bought those uh, Sedona ones in that trip to Mount Shasta, to the Ascended Masters there. Uh, now I have just spent a month or a, almost a month in uh, Keswick, in the lakes, uh, blocking out my third book, which is a, a book of poetry around this shift in consciousness and the heart consciousness. And again, really looking into the languaging of how a transmission can be held in a poem uh, so that the reading of it actually supports the shift of consciousness in the reader. And now I'm about to move into the next uh, line of pilgrimage, which is up the Rose Line, connected to this eclipse on the 8th of April. So it's going to be starting at a little chapel in Wales, St. Melangle, um, connected to the Divine Mother, Mary Magdalene. And from there, we're moving up through the lakes, um, to uh, Langdale Boulders. There's a tree there that's, that's transmissions are exquisite over to the yew tree at St. Michael's, uh, Martin's, sorry, St. Martin's, where there's a 1300 year old yew tree there and bringing through these transmissions and this, these messages from these places in the land. We're going to go from there all the way up to Isle of Lewis for the eclipse uh, at the Standing Stones up there on the 8th of April, and then bringing that energy down to Rosland, uh, which of course is the chapel or the church to Mary Magdalene. Uh, so this is what I have been doing. This is what I am about to embark on. And I wanted to come on here and invite you because every time I post something, um, while I am going to be doing full lectures and transmissions in that, which are part of the Dragonfly song uh, um, capsules that's going to be coming through in June, because I really believe that that June period is going to be a very crucial time for receiving the transmission. So on this trip, I'm going to be creating lectures and transmissions 
uh, on the land at these places and then people are going to receive them in June. So as you watch them, you're going to get the transmission from that. And that's in the, the dragonfly capsules that you'll find on my website. I'll put it in the link on here. Uh, but I'm also going to be doing um, videos for you on here on YouTube to help you know where I am and, and to connect to that energy as we go, as we prepare. For April is going to be a very, very important time uh, for getting our ducks in a row as we move into May and into June. So I'm back. I'm here. Thank you for being here with me. And uh, I'm looking forward to the next chapter.